Hi everybody, thanks for visiting Oviedo Chicks today. I'm Terry Clark, the Community Resource Manager here at the Central Florida Zoo. In the spirit of October and Halloween, I thought I would share some creepy crawlies with you today. Here in my hand is one of everybody's favorites, I'm sure. It's a cockroach. Yes, I know, gross, icky, yucky. Uh, I agree. I don't like cockroaches either. This particular one is from Madagascar. It's called a Madagascar Hissing Cockroaches. It's a little different from the ones that we have around town. Uh, we have palmetto bugs that fly. Those are the ones that really creep me out. We have actually over 3,000 different species of cockroaches in the world. Can you believe that? Gross. Um, you know, you just can't get rid of these guys. They've been around for 350 million years. So I don't know if these bug companies are saying that they're getting rid of them, but I don't think so. I think they're just, uh, you know, alluding it to it for us. But anyway, this little guy, he's called a Madagascar hissing cockroaches because he makes a hissing sound. He has these little pores on the sides of his body and he pushes air out through them and that's sort of like a territorial thing for them. So when another male cockroach comes around he sort of makes that sound. You can hear it you know quite a distance away and it's a territorial call for him. It just t basically is telling them all the other males to go away. This is my area. Or he also does it to attract a female. Aha! So that's a Madagascar hissing cockroach. So one of the other creepy crawlies that people have a tendency to be a little leery of are spiders. And today I brought a Mexican tarantula. You know, the big hairy spiders especially are the ones that give you the eebie-jeebies. We don't have any uh, tarantulas here in Florida, but we do have them in the United States. I was just out in Phoenix and uh, at the Grand Canyon and there was a tarantula walking on the sidewalk along with all the people. So you will find them out there. But one interesting note is spiders shed their skin or their exoskeleton just like snakes do when they grow. So a lot of times when you see that spider in your house and it's up in the corner and you think, oh, it hasn't moved in a while, it must be dead. Well, chances are that's just the exoskeletons hanging up out there and the spider is somewhere else in your house bigger and better. So you've got to be careful with that. So these are really cool. Uh, the kids really get into these because what they do to get their prey is they bite them with fangs. They do have these large fangs right here. They inject like a venom into their prey. And what that does is sort of liquefies all their insides. So their intestines, their stomach, their heart, just turns into like a multiplication of like a milkshake, you know? And then they actually suck the insides up. Yum, yum, kids love that. Last thing I have over here is our great horned owl. This is the largest owl that we have in Florida. And even though he's not creepy, I don't think he's creepy. I think he's beautiful. He is associated with nighttime and the dark and nocturnal things. So uh, he is a great horned owl. You can see he is a fighting machine. Everything about him is made and designed to hunt prey. His uh, feathers totally blend in with the nighttime and the trees, so you couldn't see him if he was sitting up there. He has excellent hearing. He's able to pinpoint prey right down to the smallest prey at a, quite a bit of a distance. He has these large eyes that he lets in a lot of light that he can see in the nocturnal uh, nighttime. And with that, he's able to lock himself down on a prey item that might be crawling around. He flies down, he has silent flight, so whatever it is he's after is not going to hear him coming. Then he grabs one with those large talons. You can see right there, he has very large talons. Those are his nails right there. And just the force of him grabbing it is usually what knocks out the prey or kills the prey. Then he takes it back up to a tree or a power pole or somewhere, wherever he's at. Um, and then he takes his beak and starts tearing it apart in big chunks. He doesn't have teeth, so he can't chew, so he'll tear it apart in pieces that he can swallow whole. And that's how he gets his food. So he's a great hunting machine. So here at the zoo, we have a couple of bits coming up for Halloween. We have one for the kids and one for the adults. We have our kids, our Zubu Bash. That's going to be the two weekends before Halloween. It's a great time for the kids. You can bring them in costumes. There's going to be a costume contest. There'll be a, a hayride face painting, pumpkin painting, story time with Mr. Richard. There'll be all kinds of fun things for the kids to do, including treat stations all throughout the zoo for them to stop and get treats. 
And then our nighttime event is just going to be for the adults. That's our Zulaween nocturnal activity. So that's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of uh, adult portions and potions and things like that. There'll be bizarre food. There'll be haunted train rides. There'll be the uh, laboratories that you can go through. There'll be hunting zombies, laser zombies, and all kinds of fun things. So don't miss that. Dollar beer, two dollar wine, and mixed drinks to boot. So come and see us at the zoo. We look forward to seeing you.